something. What are you staring at? Oh, sorry. Very quiet. I'm always quiet in the mornings, a thoughtful part of the day. Yeah? Yeah. You're all right, though? Of course I'm all right. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, hi, Frank. I'm just off. Ah, uh, you're all right. I'll just sit down, finish your breakfast. No, oh, I better go. I've got Alice to see to. Up to you. Some coffee made if you want some. Right. See you later. Yes. See you, Frank. Yeah. Hi, Mum. Do you want one? Please, love. Eric was out early. He's gone to Whitby. Whitby? An antiques fair. He wants to have a good look round before the crowds get there. All right. Just been out to get this. You know, a situation's vacant. Make sure I'll be first on the phone. Well, I'm pleased you've decided to do something positive. <laughs> well, I needn't have bothered. No jobs around here, especially for ex-convicts. Oh, come on, love. You know, Mum, on every job application form, there's always the same question. Do you have a criminal record? Say, yeah, and you're a criminal. No, and you're a liar. Either way, nobody wants to know you. It's nothing to do with your criminal record. The country's in a terrible state, for heaven's sake. There just aren't the jobs at the moment for anyone. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what Jack Subden said. Because it's true. Anyway, he's offered you work at the harvest. Oh, yeah, I've got to wait three months for one lousy week's work. Oh, for crying out loud, Michael, is it any wonder you can't find a job? Oh, well, thanks for your sympathy. It's your choice. Spend the rest of your life on the doll moaning about how unlucky you are, or get out there and do something about it! What do you want now? Come, we'll try some toast then. Morning. Morning. We're up a bit early. Yeah? Where have you been? Home farm. What, this time of day? Not exactly. Put Kettle of William, just gonna get changed. Changed? Oh, I see. Oh, I see what? You just got back then, have you? That's right. Been up there all night? Yeah. With Zoe? He wasn't going to spend the night with Frank, was he? So, what happens now then? What do you mean? Well, what are your plans? Where do you go from here? You know, your future. You're not your trouble, don't you? You take things far too seriously. Me? You're not going to sit there all morning, son. Have you cleaned your teeth, Robert? No, no, no. Hey, less of your cheek. Go and get ready. Oh, Dad. Now. <laughs> this blasted thing's a complete nuisance. I feel like hiding it. Oh, come on, Jack. Didn't you ever have a new toy when you were young? Yeah. And I bet you couldn't put it down for a few weeks either. Then you'd probably throw it in some cupboard and never play with it again. You keep saying you'll get bored with it sooner or later. I'd just like to know when. Hiya. Oh, hiya, Mark. You're up and about early. I wanted to bring these round. Eggs? Pheasant's eggs. For your sponge cake. Well, there was no need for you to go out of your way this time in the morning. Well, that's just hoping for a lift into town. Oh, Spitfire playing up again. Yeah, it's my day off and there's some shopping that I want to get in. Well, it's not a problem. I've got to take Robert to school in a minute. Right, thanks. Well, if you're not working this afternoon, why don't you come round to Mill Cottage for your tea? I'm sure Annie would be pleased to see you. Well, one Cathy and Chris Munn's invading the place. It was Cathy's idea. She thinks Annie's not very keen on coming round here. Well? I'd love to, but I promised I'd show Debbie round the game farm this afternoon. All right, don't worry. I'll make sure I save you a piece of sponge cake. Right. Let's get this little monster off to school. You ready, son? Let's go, Dad. Right, have fun this afternoon. Thank you. See you. OK, Dad. Ready. Come on. Bye. 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 One, a scrambled egg on toast. Oh, cheers. You're not having any? No, I had breakfast up at home farm, didn't I? <laughs> breakfast as well. Things are looking good. Not bad, yeah. So it's on then, is it now, the big romance? I'd say so. Oh. I suppose you'll be seeing Zoe tonight again, then. Yeah, I reckon so. That's a shame. No Why? Maldi. I just wanted to know if you'd give me a hand shifting that wine. Oh, ordinarily, I'd love to, but you know what it is, don't you? Yeah, I know how it is. Well, Nick, uh, don't bother waiting up for me, will you? What? How serious do you reckon Chris is about his offer? Deadly serious. He's going to mortgage Mill Cottage to raise the cash. And if he can't and the deal falls through, you've got the cash from the divorce. Exactly. Only one thing you can do, then. Accept Chris's offer. I knew you'd say that. Well, it makes sense. With Frank promising cash, 
Chris buying your shares, you got the best of both worlds. I know, but I just wish Frank could get himself together and we'd sort this mess out between just the two of us. Just think yourself first for a change. Take a leaf out of Chris's book, you mean? Hey. I don't think Chris is buying my shares in the interest of family harmony. What's he up to then? Keeping it all very close to his chest. Who knows? What he's like. Well, maybe things are looking up for you at last, eh? Yeah, fingers crossed. Which reminds me, I had a call from Roger Ballantyne last night. Oh, horse owner? The very one. Asked me to dinner. Seems he's changed his mind. Wants to know if I can stable his horses when I'm back on my feet. I thought Neil was putting the boot in. Not anymore. I advised my solicitor to write to him, threatening legal action if he continues smearing my name. I also thought I'd drop him a line, reminding him just how much the press enjoys slander cases. Good for you. Looks like it's done the trick. Yeah. Now, have you any other surprises for me? Right, do you want to talk from town? Sorry, love? I'm going into town. Is there anything you want? Oh, no thanks, Michael. I thought I'd take your advice. Get out from beneath your feet, go and have a look around the job centre. All right. Right, well, I'll see you later then. OK, love, have a nice time. Yeah. Huh? The job centre? You're kidding, aren't you? Right, I'm off then. Wouldn't let your dad catch you doing that if I were you. Sorry? This member in his flowers. <laughs> right. Who wouldn't have thought you needed to do that? But the house would have been full of flowers. What? Well, red roses. Isn't that what it's supposed to send? What are you talking about, Nick? Well, I thought Archie would be showering you with flowers today. Well, so he's told you then. Yeah. Really pleased for you both, sorry. Thank you. Oh, and here's a tip for when your flowers do arrive. Get some old coins and put them in the bottom of the vase. Helps them last longer. Mind you, I should get quite a few quid's worth of change. It looked smitten when I left them this morning. Oh, this is such a cliche. I think that Archie would never be so crass. Sorry, I spoke. There's the phone. Help yourself. Now? No time like the present. Just tell him you're ready to make a deal. OK. I'll have to leave you to it. I've got to go to Jeff Thomas's for the AI man. See you later. Thanks, Joe. Christopher, it's Kim. Oh, hello there. Listen, I'll get straight to the point. I'm ready to do business. Good. That's good. I'll be at your office around seven. Well, yeah, I think I can make that, yeah. I'll see you then. OK, right. I'll see you then, Mr Jones. Right, bye. George Jones. Sounds a bit abrupt. Well, you know what old George is like. <laughs> what did he want? Well, I don't know. He just wants to see me about making more regular runs to the continent from Hull. Oh. So when are you seeing him? Well, actually, tonight. Oh, Chris, we're supposed to be going out for a curry. Look, I know, I'm sorry, but he said it was urgent. And after all, he is the customer. a cup of tea? Yes. Here. Let me take your coat. And sit down. It's good to be home, eh? Home? Well, back in Beckendale. Yes, I suppose it is. Annie, is everything all right? I'm sorry, Leonard. I just can't believe I'm never going back to Emmerdale again. And you mustn't upset yourself. Easier said than done. Yes, you're right. I'll go. Ah, hey, Amos, come on in. Now then, Leonard. <laughs> Annie, I just thought I'd pop in, welcome you back. Amos, hey, we'll put the kettle on. Good, because I brought a few other people round for tea and all. <laughs> Hello. Well, I hope you two haven't eaten. 
Sarah's baked enough to feed an army. Yeah. <laughs> Right, Seth. You thought Seth was a gamekeeper, not a doctor. All right, you too. Seth, what are you doing? This is a delicate operation. You need the skill of a surgeon to get this right. The pheasant's eggs. Ooh. And what's that in the syringe, then? Mustard. Mustard? English mustard. Good, strong stuff. Blow your head off. <laughs> it's to stop the other pheasants pecking the newly laid oh. eggs. Oh, aye. Peck at one of them and the pheasant will never look at another egg again. Brilliant. Aye, uh, no dull moments, loving gamekeeping. Because animals are always learning new tricks, so I've got to make sure I'm one step ahead of them. I told you gamekeeping was interesting. Yeah, well, why did you give it up to work at the holiday village then? Well, because... Well, because I don't have to get out of bed at the crack of dawn. <laughs> That's why. Hi. What are you doing here? Rachel's not in. Welcome to see you. What the hell for? I need to talk to you. For me? Look, what do you want? To talk? Just talk? I don't think we've got much to talk about, do you? Please. Look, I haven't got time for your game. It's, it's not a game. Have you come all the way from Beckendale? Yeah. Just to see me? I don't think so. I need some advice. You're the only person that can help me. Oh, really? I've got a problem. Look, if you're not well, Michael, go and see your own doctor. No, it's nothing like that. Well, what is it, then? It's about Rachel. I knew it. I'm warning you, Michael, stay away from Rachel. Well, hear me out, will you? Look, I've had a busy day, and I'm tired. You've got to listen. Just listen. I'm leaving Beckingdale. Well, what's that got to do with me and Rachel? I'm moving to Leeds. Tea. Yes, a lovely surprise. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Grand, do you want to go on a computer game? Not at the moment, Lily. I've told you not to bring that to the table, son. Uncle Joe, do you want to go? Uh, maybe after tea, eh? <laughs> Uncle Irma. <laughs> Lad, I wouldn't know how. <laughs> right, that does it. I'll take this until we get home. Dad, I'm always playing. I know you are, but it's always at meal times or when you should be doing your reading. And we caught him sitting up in bed at midnight the other day playing it. Honestly, Ma, sometimes I wonder why you bought him this stupid thing. Jack. Uh, Jack's right. Toys should be for playtime, and certainly not at the meal table. <laughs> well, what say you we cut into that delicious-looking sponge cake? <laughs> I've been waiting for someone to suggest that. It looks wonderful. Oh, thanks, Leonard. I made it with pheasant's eggs, you know. Really? Amos's idea. Aye. And it looks that grand, I think it deserves a fresh pot of tea. <laughs> <laughs> So, have you moved in here with Rachel and Sangeeta? I don't think that's got anything to do with you. Oh, sorry, I'm only asking. I thought you were after advice, not information. Yeah, I am. Move to Sheffield or London. That's my advice. Leeds is the only city I know. And besides, it's easy to get to. And I've got a sister that lives here as well. And the next fiancé. But don't you see, that's just it. That's why I'm here, talking to you. Hey? Yeah. Eh? Listen, the last thing I want to do is put Rachel under any more pressure. I've caused her enough trouble. If moving to Leeds is going to cause her any grief, well, I'll go somewhere else. Do you mean that? I wouldn't be here if I didn't. Had I moved to Leeds without a second thought for Rachel. I'm coming here to work, not upset her. Where are you going to live? Well, I'd rent somewhere anywhere. I could always stay where our else room until I find somewhere. Well, jobs are pretty thin on the ground here as well, you know. Leeds is the only chance I've got. I've got to get out of Beckingdale. Well, I'm sure Rachel wouldn't mind you living in Leeds if you kept out of her way. Yeah. What sort of work are you looking for? Uh, anything. As long as it keeps me busy and gives me a few bob. I suppose I could keep an eye open for you. Oh, would you? Well, I mean, you don't have to. Yeah, I know I don't have to. I just hope you're being honest with me. If I find out that you're not... Josh, I just want a new chance. It's as simple as that. Right. OK. Do you want a coffee? Oh, yeah. Yeah, great, yeah. This is what we call a pen, love. It's where we keep the birds. Yeah, thanks, Mark. I think I can see that. Right. She asked for eggs all over the place, then it looks as if hens have laid them. Yeah, but don't the cocks know that the eggs have been tampered with? No, they're not that bright. They're not as bright as folk are. If you look closely, you can see the marks. Really? Yeah, I'll show you. That's strange. 
What's the matter? Are up here first thing this morning, this shelter were full of eggs. Well, don't worry, Seth. You haven't been raided by poachers. I took them. You what? Yeah, you remember. You said I could take some for Sarah to bake that cake. Oh, I remember. But them eggs were eggs I put down. You what? They're full of mustard. <laughs> Sarah's cake! This looks delicious. You don't get cakes like this in Spain. <laughs> oh. Oh. Annie, what oh. is it? Oh. Sarah, what have you put in this? Dad, I'm going to be sick. Oh. I'm going to get some water. I'm coming with you. Hello. Ah. This is nice. Sarah, you're back. You all right, darling? Oh. Elizabeth? I know. I thought you were taking it up to Tate. So did I. Well, why didn't you? Something wrong? I'm not sure. Well, what is it? I want to keep it, Eric. Keep it? I want you to sell it and us to keep the money. Come on, haven't you done that? Yes, I'll just be a minute, Chris. Look, it's nearly ten to seven. George Jones will be here any second. It's OK, you can take him next door. I want to stay here. Look, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to snap. It's, it's just all the paperwork's here. I don't want to be dashing around all over the place. All right. I suppose I can finish it off tomorrow. Thank you. I'll get you covered. Looks like your visitors arrived. Hold on, that's not George Jones. It's one of the drivers. He must have forgotten something. Right. Well, I'll sort him out. You get yourself to the restaurant, eh? Yes, and don't be late. I won't be. Yes. There you go, darling. Thank you, Eric. Now, you do realise that what you're suggesting that we do isn't strictly legal. I thought it might not be. Well, there's no might not be about it is illegal. I told you that the other day. I know. And yet you think we should still sell the bracelet? Sell it and keep the money for ourselves? Yes. Yes, I do. Oh, for heaven's sake, Eric, it's a stupid law. And anyway, nobody's going to lose out. Yep, except for Frank Tate, that is. Well, why should Frank Tate have the bracelet? Just because it was found on his land? He hasn't owned the land that long. And goodness knows how long that thing's been buried there. <laughs> Centuries, probably. <laughs> exactly. And the last person who needs money around here is Frank Tate. <sighs> Just think what we could do with it. I could think of a few things. <laughs> Just think we could clear all our debts. Buy a car, maybe. Put something in a trust fund for Alice. That's a good idea. You know, the more I've thought about it, the more I'm convinced it's the right thing to do. Well, if that's what you really want, you know I'll go along with you. Right. That's settled, then. You can take it into work tomorrow and see about selling it. I'll do my best. Oh, and Eric, you will be careful, won't you? I mean, you won't get into trouble or anything. Don't worry. I'll be fine. And I don't think we should tell anybody about this. I won't breathe a word. All alone, I see. Yep. I persuaded Cathy she should go home. I thought Cathy was working with you now. Surely she'd be interested in our little bit of business? Cathy's only involvement is in the haulage side of the business, and that's the way I'd like to keep it. What she doesn't know won't hurt her, eh? Exactly. Now, if you don't mind, can we get on with it? Have you got the money? A banker's draft for £150,000 made out to you. And the other 100000 To follow. A copy of the letter I gave to my solicitor today. And the share transfer form, all it needs is your signature, and you've got half my shares. That'll be pleased. Oh, I'm sure. Right. I'll get these off to my solicitor. 
then we can look forward to running the family business again. If you look in that mirror anymore, it will crack. Huh? Archie, take it from me, you look fine. Yeah, I know, it's just, well, it's our first date, isn't it? So we'll go out properly. I don't think Zoe's gonna chuck it just because you've got one hair out of place. No, I suppose not. Right, I better get off them. We're good at pictures. Yeah. No snogging on the back row. You're joking, aren't you? Eyesight like mine, I'll be sitting on the front row. Are you gonna watch the film then, are you? Zoe will be disappointed. Yeah. But I'll make it up to her later on, no doubt. Oh, I'm sure you will. Right, well, I'll not bother staying up. Oh, shunt it for you. See ya. See ya. I don't know who is more embarrassed, me or Archie. I can imagine. I mean, a surprise dinner guess is one thing, but finding someone like Archie Brooks at your breakfast table, you start to wonder. And he definitely stayed all night. Either that or he's got himself a job as the milkman. Well, I don't know why he's so surprised. They've been seeing each other for months. But they're such an unlikely couple. It takes all sorts. Yeah, I suppose that's what they said about Kim and me. The odd couple, doomed from the start. Well, I wish them all the best. I'm sorry about your cake, Sarah. Ah, uh, it's not your fault, Mark. And you, Annie. I've ruined your tea party. Oh, nonsense, lad. It's worth it to see Jack and Joe running out of here like scalded cats. Oh, thanks a lot, Ma. Can I have some more orange juice, please, Mama? Oh, poor Robert. He still can't get rid of taste at cake. Come on, lad. There's some in the kitchen. Thanks, Amos. Uh, we're all here. Me and Joe have been talking about changing the name of Hawthorne. Changing his name? Aye. Not too. Emmerdale, of course. <coughs> what do you think, Sarah? I think it would be nice for the name of Emmerdale to live on. What do you think, Annie? What's wrong? Ma? It's wrong. There'll only ever be one Emmerdale farmhouse, and that's the one that I lived in. Yeah, but it's only a name, Ma. It may be only a name to you. It's a lifetime of memories to me, and I won't let you destroy them this way. But Ma, that's why we want to change the name. To keep the memories of Emmerdale alive. But you can't do it, Joe. Annie. I'm sorry, Leonard, but now I see the point of this little tea party. It wasn't to welcome us back, it was to soften me up. Now, just a minute, Well, Ma. it won't work, the pair of you. Do you hear me? Is everything all right? No, Emmerdale, it isn't. Excuse me, I'm very tired. So, where are the young lovebirds off to tonight? Well, according to Archie, they're out hitting the bright lights. Sounds exciting. I've gone to the cinema in hot. <laughs> Evening, Frank. Lynn. Kim. Listen, I don't want to interrupt, but can I have a word? Of course. In private. Lynn, do you mind? Don't mind me. Sit down, have a drink. No, thanks. I haven't come here to socialize. Oh, I see. I came to tell you I've dropped the shareholders' action. You what? Today, I went to see my solicitor. Oh, Kim, that's great. Thanks. I thought you'd be pleased. I knew you wouldn't go ahead with it. I knew you wouldn't do that to me. 